Christ is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the 11th chapter of Acts. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea, heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were sent to, in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us, 
when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, and fresh wind, doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. The second lesson is from the 21st chapter of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while and you will see me no longer. And again a little while and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me. And again a little while and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, 
Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come, but when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish. For joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. The word of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Trying to look around, other than the babushka back there, do we have any other children with us this morning? I mean, besides John Carrick. No? Then we will launch right into the sermon for the adults. I'll ask that you all come up and join me on this. Well, first of all, I bring you greetings from our bishop, from his staff, from executive council. I have been with them a lot lately in both the United States and Canada. We are truly a North American Lutheran church. And when I was with uh, David Wendell at one point in, it wasn't in Canada, it was in Pittsburgh a week or so ago, um, I was talking to him about St. John's and I just wanted to share with you what he said. He said, I wish that I had the power to clone pastors. Now, for those of you that don't know, David Wendell is the bishop's assistant for all things ecumenical as well as getting profiles from churches and pastors. And when churches need to call a new pastor, getting them kind of together so that you can interview candidates and that sort of thing. Well, at any rate, in speaking about you, David said, Pastor Wendell said, I wish that I had the power to clone pastors. Because if I did, I would clone a dozen Ernie Wendells. A dozen. And I said, why in the world? That was for you, Ernie, if you happen to watch this video later on. He said, because Ernie's a good pastor. He does what needs to be done. The people like him. I won't get any complaints, or not many anyway, for a long, long time. So he would make my job a lot easier. So instead of just bringing you general greetings from the bishop and his staff, I wanted you to know something specific that they had to say about you and your pastor. Beyond that, uh, my wife Susan is with me this morning. She goes everywhere I go in these situations, and I'm so grateful for that. But I'm also grateful that uh, God has blessed us to uh, uh, be together for these uh, two score of years, and it's uh, always a blessing to be with her um, we enjoy coming to this church. It's different from the first time I was here. It, it seemed, maybe it's because it was in the evening, but it just seems brighter in here each Sunday that I'm here. Your windows are amazing. You've done a great job in here from uh, the docile cloth all the way through to the back. We just enjoy being with you. We also enjoy not just the, the stuff, but the people. As I was walking down the hallway this morning, got lots of greetings from folks, lots of smiles, lots of handshakes. And you know what? I hate to say this, but you don't get that in just every church that you go to. So kudos to you and blessings from our God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart upon your word and the meditations of all of our hearts as this word is proclaimed. May it all be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Your pastor has a saying, I'm not sure if you're aware of it or not, but that saying has spread all over the Carolinas mission districts. It's fast becoming a favorite saying of pastors in the Carolinas. I was spreading it around Canada a few weeks ago. Let's see if you've heard him say this before. Well, he always starts it that way. 
Well, Paul, it is the church. Have you ever heard him say that? Uh, maybe, maybe after a council meeting sometimes. I have no idea how your council meetings know, except you are a church, and you are a Lutheran church, so I can take a pretty good stab at how some council meetings go. And Ernie would be heard to say, as he uh, settles into his car to drive back to Bermuda Run, just as the door shuts and before he turns on the ignition, well, it is the church. That's a good attitude for pastors to have. It's a good attitude for presidents of council to have. It's a good attitude for all the people who sit in the pews Sunday after Sunday to have because without that thought, without that sentiment, well, it is the church. In other words, well, it is people. We would lose heart. We would get frustrated. We would quick. We would quit. We would storm out. Wouldn't we? You've probably done it before, once or 50 times. <laughs> You've probably seen other people do it so many times that they never come back again. Just to go someplace else and do it over and over and over again until they give up all hope whatsoever and lose heart not only for the church but for the gospel that propels us through council meetings. It's good to remember Ernie's sentiment. Say it with me. Well, it is the church. That also is for you, Ernie. One of the times that we need to remember it is the church is when change besets us. Now, I imagine that in your church, change has never happened. <laughs> or, when it does happen, you just love it. Don't you love change? In fact, in the rest of the service, I'm going to change three things in the order that are just going to play with your mind. I'm kidding you, because I know you don't want any change. But we know that our lives are beset with change. We know that the church is change. In fact, we can hardly escape change in our readings of the lessons today. And by the way, you do a great job of reading the lessons even saying Caesarea instead of Caesarea. Caesarea is how Americans say it. Caesarea is how it would have been said. Very good. I appreciate your reading. But there's a lot of change in those readings. Look at Peter in our historical lesson in the reading from Acts. There he is. He's uh, in a trance, as he says. Something has come over him unexpectedly. It's not normal. It's outside of himself. He sees something that isn't really there. In fact, if anybody had been around him, they wouldn't have seen what he saw. And in that, he understood because it was said to him three times. We need that, don't we? We need visions and trances and pastors to repeat things over and over to us, don't we? So he gets it three times so that he'll understand that now, as God had always intended throughout the Old Testament, you see it all over the place, particularly in the Psalms, that, the, that salvation is not just for the Jews. It only started with the Jews. It only started with people like Peter. But now, it's for the Gentiles too. Now you talk about change. There is nothing that has ever happened at St. John's Lutheran Church in Statesville, North Carolina, that is as momentous of a change as what Peter experienced that day in a trance. Salvation now is for the Gentiles too, and you, Peter, will take it to them. Now, he was asked to change in a major way. You don't ask Jews to go and eat with Gentiles. You don't ask Jews to go into Gentiles homes you don't ask Jews to go and talk and associate with Gentiles and you surely don't ask Jews to go and extend the salvation of God to anybody but a Jew or someone who has converted to Judaism pretty much on their own and that's exactly what Peter was asked to do not even the changes that our church went through in the late 2000s and is still going through in large part today. 
Nothing. Doesn't even begin to compare with what Peter was faced with along the lines of change on that rooftop. But God knew that Peter would be faithful. Does God know that we're going to be faithful? Does God know that we're going to be faithful with the things that he calls us to do? I'm looking at some of you out there to see if you're in a trance this morning yet. Give it a few more minutes. In that trance, in that vision, in that word from God, will he consider you faithful to respond? He considered Peter faithful because he had already told the Gentiles that Peter was to go and speak to, to declare God's message that Peter was on the way. That's the way we should face change. When God calls us to face change, we should be ready to go. We should be on the way. Now, I don't know what's going on at St. John's, and I don't know what's going on in Statesville. I barely know what's going on this morning in my life. But you know, what is God calling you to do? Are you on the way? Are you ready to declare his message? Well, you know, the message has to be the closing line, the closing phrase, indeed, from that Old Testament or that Acts history lesson this morning. Repentance that leads to life. That's the message. That's the message that we are sent with. But before we talk about that in closing, I want to talk about the change that's in the other lessons. In the New Testament lesson, the entire earth is wiped out. You want to talk about change. That means Statesville would no longer be here. That means that your house is no longer here. That means that this sanctuary, this whole corner, gone. Not only heaven, but or not only earth, but heaven. Gone, passed away, and replaced with a new heaven and a new earth. Peter adds later on in his first epistle, in which righteousness dwell. New heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwell. Change. Big change. The church is always faced with change. But are we faithful to get in step with how God is changing things? Then in the gospel lesson, there was a heartbreaking change. Basically, Jesus has been telling the disciples who just refuse to get it, I don't blame them, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave. He'd been with them for three years. They'd been with him every single day, 24-7, for three years. <laughs> That's a lot of time to spend with somebody who now is going to tell you, see you later, which is basically what he was saying. See you later. You'll not see me in a little while, but then in a little while, you'll see me again. He will be with us. That's the message that the disciples weren't getting. We'll see each other again. Even though change happens, we'll see each other again. Susan and I are getting ready to... Uh, buy a house and relocate from Asheboro, the community where we last pastored a church, and uh, to kind of get out of that community and let them move on and let us move on and change. But in the midst of that change and picking things out, and you know, we're, we're building this house from foundation up, picking out everything, got to think it through. Now I know that some of you are younger than me, some of you are older than me, but Susan and I are making those kind of considerations, you know. One floor or two floors? How many steps? What kind of shower? What kind of tub? All kinds of considerations that we never made before. And you know why we have to do it? Because things are changing. We're changing. We were driving along the road, and I said, I'm getting sick of talking about dying, getting older, getting decrepit, not being able to move around. And then not being able to move at all. Change. To which Jesus says, I will see you again. <laughs> I will see you again. That's good news, isn't it? 
I will see you again. So back to that message from Acts. Repentance that leads to life. Repentance that leads to life. Otherwise, he will not see you again. Hmm? So what is repentance? Let us, let's get it clear in our heads so that we can allow it to lead us to life. The greatest heresy in the church for nearly 2,000 years has been this definition of repentance. This is the greatest false teaching there ever was. It has led more people in the church away from Christ while they thought they were being led to Christ. It's such a deep, horrible heresy. Here it is. Repentance is that you're sorry for your sins and then you do something to make up for them. That's the worst heresy that's ever hit the church, and it's still rampant in the church. And if you think just because you're Lutherans that you're not affected by it, you're wrong. Because we instinctively, in that old sin nature, we think there must be something I have to do to repent. And there isn't. There's something that you should do, but there is nothing that you have to do to repent. Now, some of you are thinking... This preacher is crazy because it's so embedded in us, this heresy. This is what we have to do. We do have to be sorry for our sin. Absolutely, we have to be sorry for it. And we have to have faith that God forgives us for the sake of his son, Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. That is repentance. Those two things. Sorrow for the sin and faith that God forgives us. Then, after the faith, then after knowing that we're forgiven, we surely ought to do good works. We surely ought to try not to sin. But there's no amount of good works that we could possibly do collectively that would make up for even one person's sin in here. Because Christ alone has done that. Do you hear what I just said? He has done that. He's not going to do it for you. He's not going to get around to it someday. He has done it. But do you have the faith that he has? So that's what we do at the beginning of our service. <coughs> we confess our sin. We're sorry for our sin. You hear the words of absolution. You are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now you either believe that or you don't. That's faith or lack thereof. That's the message to the Gentiles. That's the message that Peter was sent out to proclaim. In fact, he went all the way to Rome. But by the time the Apostle Paul, who desperately wanted to preach the gospel in Rome, by the time he got there, guess who had beat him there? Peter, because he had been in a trance on the rooftop that day and heard the word of God and got his feet in motion. And he went beyond that Gentile's house to the house of all Gentiles. In the, in the empire and preached the gospel of repentance that leads to life. Not just sorrow for sin, but faith in the only God who forgives us for his son's sake. Now, when the Spirit comes, and he has, he will guide you into all truth. Now, what I mean by that this morning, that means a number of things, but what I mean for you this morning is as we come to the Lord's table, the Spirit of God will guide you into all truth. As we come to the Lord's table, the Spirit of God will tell you, this is Christ's body. This is Christ's blood. Given and shed for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. For the Opportunity to go out and work harder? No, for the forgiveness of sins. Faith. We have confessed our sins. We have heard that we are forgiven for Christ's sake. Now let us come and eat and drink 
and know the grace that's been bestowed so richly upon us in faith, in Christ and God. faith and the and creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs.
Heavenly Father, through the death and resurrection of your Son and by the power of your Spirit, you have invited people of every race and nation to be one. Let your church be a community of believers, undivided by the variety of appearances and experiences with which we have been blessed. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, you have made a world of beauty and mystery and have called human beings to be its stewards. Encourage us to care for your world and abandon wasteful and destructive ways so that we and all creation might praise your name. Lord, in your mercy. God of new life, we look to the life of the world to come with hope where tears are wiped away and death is no more. Teach us to share this hope with others in a way that reflects your grace and love in the truth of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. God of the sick and the dying, we pray that you comfort all who suffer from illness. We pray especially for those whom we name before you now in our hearts and on our lips. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, your Son commanded us to love one another as he loved us. May this congregation be known for your love among its members and as it is shown to others. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy and in your promise to hear our prayers. In Jesus' name. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please take a moment and share his peace with one another.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life of our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.
Does somebody have announcements? It says announcements next. Read your in touch, okay. <laughs> Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.